Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Frank Dialogue. Thank you very much to each and every one of you for making time to be here tonight. It's going to be an evening of interaction, of engagement, and hopefully an interaction that's frank, that's robust, that's honest. Of course, uh, we don't want it to be chaotic, but we want it to be very, very robust. I want to invite you to be free to express your views um, and, and, and ensure that when we live here, we've got solutions, right? You're all sitting in, um, in, 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 in round tables for a, for a good reason, because we're going to have dinner together. And during that dinner, this is where you're going to thresh out the solutions, right? Uh, it's very easy to identify what the problems are, and we have to do that, of course. Uh, because if we diagnose wrong, we won't be able to, to be able to come up with proper solutions. So there's no free dinner. You're going to work for your dinner tonight. In those tables, when we're having dinner, this is where it's all going to happen. And then I'm going to come to you at some point to say, what have you been discussing on this table? Right? Now, uh, can we just welcome our guest of honor, the Minister of uh, Police, uh, Minister Becky Kele, who's with us here. Just, let's just welcome him. <laughs> Minister Becky Kele, thank you so much for making the time uh, to be here. I know that uh, your, your schedule is, is tight. Minister uh, Zigalala is going to be joining us virtually. Let's welcome him as well. Uh, minister had to have an operation yesterday and is otherwise uh, not disabled, but demobilized for the evening. But he, dis he agreed that he needs to be here and participate. So he's going to be joining us. He's already there uh, 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 on, online. Thank you, Minister, for, 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 for also joining us. Can we also give him another round of applause over there? Uh, Mr. Chata represents the Black Business Forum, who are our platinum sponsor tonight. And uh, can we please welcome him? He's going to be coming to talk to us just now to welcome. But let's welcome him. And uh, as we thank the Black Business Forum, Federation rather, the Black Business Federation for being the kind platinum sponsor of tonight's event. Thank you so much. Uh, we, appreciate, uh, we appreciate you and we'll be inviting you just now to come and welcome our guests. The, 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 the CEO of the, the CIDB, um, Mr. Dadla, is here as well. We'll also be talking a little later, our, our golden sponsor for this particular event. Thank you so, so much, Daddy, for your generous contribution and keeping your word, because in the last dialogue, you did tell the whole world that you will be supporting the next dialogue uh, that we have. And I think we'll... Uh, uh, talk to you later on about that this can't be the last time. But let's welcome and thank uh, Mr. Dada there, who's going to also be welcoming the, the rest of the guests just now. I just need a handheld microphone there, please, yeah. uh, if you can bring it to me. The issue of the construction mafia and others say there's none so-called but this whole issue about you know, contestation around economic involvement of communities in big projects, et cetera, is, has been with us for a while. And it's clear that it's going to be with us for a, for a, for a while to come. Um, you know, just last week, um, you know, they, they, we, we, we've had in various parts of the country a situation where there was con contestation, there was conflict at various construction sites. A couple of months ago, the Minister of Public Works indicated that some 600 people have been arrested. Because in the last dialogue, he was asked, who are these people who have been arrested? And I'm sure with a new audience, he will tell us again today, who are these people? But the Minister of Police is here, and he was showing me that people are in court as we speak. Is the issue really a security issue only? Or is there a deeper problem that we need to deal with? Now, this part of what the dialogue must deal with. There's no one answer to these things. But what we need to do is when we come out of here, we should be able to come up with a set of solutions that can take the matter forward. It's not a talk shop in a typical sense where we just have a television show and that's all that matters. 
It's about whether or not at the end of this evening, there's a document that we can agree on together here that can be in front of the minister's consent, in front of the government's consent, uh, to be able to do something about. By the way, we've invited the government here, of course, Ulu Natal, um, uh, in a form of the MEC for Economic Development, in a form of the Premier. And they, are, they, are, they have both not been able to be here for whatever reason. But they were invited. Don't think we can just come here and don't invite the owners of the province. It's a pity they are not here, despite the invitations. But the show has to go on. Right? And citizens have to rise and say, what do we want to do uh, in taking forward issues that matter to citizens? So the to us dialogue, really, it's about ensuring that while it's a contest of views, we also come up with, with solutions. I'm going to come to the floor then just talk to two or three of you who, who can just, just get us into gear, man, to say, what on earth should we be dealing with here tonight if we are serious about making this a frank dialogue? Let's see here who's going to be my first victim here tonight. Okay, let me start with you. Where's the film? Okay, okay, I'll come to you. Let me start this side. Please stand. Thank you so much. My name is Mpo Dagada. I'm the president of Arise South Africa. There was a research paper that we saw that the construction mafia cost the country about 68 billion per annum. And when I looked at that figure, my first question was to say, if this is what is costing the construction mafia, it means that this must be organized systems. I don't want to call them crime. And really my question or my comment is to say, we can't continue to perpetuate behavior that when people that live in those localities organize themselves and try and participate in business, the first label we give them is a mafia. Yeah. We can't continue to perpetuate the behavior that the government must be unleashed upon them to protect even outsiders, Chinese companies that get construction jobs, and to call those that are local a mafia or a cult or a criminal syndicate. The second yeah. thing being the government is there to serve the people. Mm. It becomes important that the government understands why are the people uniting in a local and formal manner where we talk about 68 billion. This is not small children coming together to steal a spade. This is mm. organized business people. They have got functioning bank accounts and some of them even knowledgeable. And what we are seeing is that the government is quick to label without proper research, without engaging the people on the ground and understanding how we can formalize these sort of systems to allow them to participate what in business. What do you say without proper research? Are you saying that the label Mafia was without proper research. It's a, it's a wrong label, Definitely. in your view. Definitely. And the reason why I say that is because when we look at how the money flows, it's as though the moment the money flows towards black people that live in that locality, it is then called a mafia or some sort of cartel. But when the money flows to Chinese companies, where we've seen South African government money leaving, this is taxpayers that all of us pay, and going to Chinese foreign nationals that have applied for these jobs, immediately we call it formalized business. And yeah. immediately we applaud it, and there's no investigation, no research paper being done. So but Lucian, what so do you think? Solution, the government must engage people in the community. Before construction jobs are given to foreign nationals and given to international companies, they must engage the people and help them where they need assistance. Many of these people are trying to participate in the economy. And the fact that the government is quick to label them and fight them surely shows that the government is no longer a government of the people. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, that's a big start, eh? Yeah? This is a big starter. This is a big starter. Come, let's hear. What do you think? Get us started. Uh, my name is Andre Kepela. I'm the coordinator of the KZN Growth Coalition. Um, I've been involved in public-private partnerships for 25 years uh, mm. through KZN Growth Coalition. And uh, we've always had an excellent relationship here with the government, be it uh, provincial, be it national, and... Uh, uh, obviously, the municipalities. Yeah. But in t t 
2016, the trouble started. Mm. A good intention by government to empower people and give a share of businesses uh, you know, by 30% and so on yes. was reluctantly initially accepted by business, but then accepted as such. But this process was hijacked. Hijacked by? It was hijacked by unscrupulous people, um, initially um, criminal elements, yeah. but then political factions as well. And uh, once the politicians got involved, uh, it so got, the politicians are involved in construction mafia? Uh, there is no question that uh, they were involved and they, to a certain extent they are still involved. You are joking? Yes, I am not joking. <laughs> I am not joking. <laughs> okay. um, why I am saying this is because in 2017-18, you know, we have had an um, uh, avalanche, uh, absolute avalanche of uh, uh, cases that were reported to us. And initially, we tried to reach out to SEPS, and uh, Palesa is here with me, the CEO of Chamber of Commerce in Durban, mm. and we didn't have a hearing. Mm. Twice we were allowed to meet, and then at the last moment we were to already meet with, to meet the government with SEPS. Yeah, well, with SEPS. Yeah, you, you, they refused to meet you. They refused to meet us. Yeah, um, quite, uh, yeah. That was before Sister Zekalala, who is on the program now. Yeah. And then later, Mkwanazi, the current yeah. commissioner, came in. Yeah. Things have changed. Okay. Yeah. From that moment on, we started to have corporations and business started to meet. And we felt sorry for the forums, you know, uh, because there were good intentions. Not all the so called development forums. What, what would were sort corrupt. it out? Okay, well, it's a starter now. Don't eat the yeah. whole yeah. elephant. Yeah. <laughs> what would sort it out in your view? What would sort it out? Uh, obviously, once and for all. Once and for all, uh, honesty mm. in approach, mm. and obviously expose those people that are making a lot of money using mm. good intentions and good people in trying to make money, and they hijack those processes yeah. for the nefarious. But is there reasons. also resistance of white business who think, why the hell must I give away 80 percent? Look, it's not so-called white business or Indian business or black business and yeah, so on. This white All one. businesses yeah. are affected just yeah. about the same way. Yeah. But uh, there are white businesses resisting it. That's what I want to... I will come to the others. This, tell me about white th big th business. There's no question That's that where the money there will is. always be resistance somewhere. Yeah. And they, but uh, overall, a majority of people understand that to do business, you have to negotiate with uh, right. know, opposition. That's an excellent starter. Thank you very much. I just want one more. Any volunteer? Yes. Quick, quick starter. Remember, yeah? don't, don't eat the whole thing. No, 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 JJ. You see, the problem is one. There is no such as, as, as a thing as called a construction mafia. Okay. The only construction mafia I can remember yeah. is that one that uh, colluded before 2010, yeah. when the white companies were building soccer stadiums, yeah. they, they admitted to that. Yeah. But uh, right now, I would uh, say the only thing that we see happening, yeah. uh, small construction companies that have been sidelined, marginalized by um, these uh, government individuals, politicians, who uh, whom are co-opted yeah. by these white uh, owners, because the problem in this country, yeah. we must always, I mean, we must just put it straight. White people are a problem in this country. We yeah. can say whatever we want to say, Our, they've called. All, all they are people. a problem. This Our is man. where, that is why we are where we are today. Sure. And, and the sad part is our politicians are afraid of them. If they don't co-op them to positions in their companies, uh, yeah. the next thing will happen, uh, that will happen is we are being called uh, mafia, so forth and so on. By yeah. the way, They're I'm a proud of member of Black Business Federation, yeah. uh, which you will hear as we, we, we are here today. Yeah. Uh, 30 billion has been invested by Sandra Lea yeah. in this province. 30, and 30, guess, billion. 30 billion or more. Mm. And, and the good part is BPF has made sure that there is not even one stoppage. Yeah. But you will hear uh, because our leadership will, will, will clearly give stats of yeah. the projects that are currently taking place in this province. Yeah. So uh, this show must uh, uh, find the real culprit. Okay. We are not the culprit. Right. White people are a culprit. All right. thank, thank, you very thank, much. thank you, JJ. All right, thank you. No, that's not a starter at all. It's a main cause, man. You. All right, you. Uh, let me go back to the podium because hey, it's getting hot here.
Mr. Jafta uh, from the uh, Black Business Forum. Please come and welcome our guests. Please, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for our platinum sponsor. Say welcome us to this uh, August occasion. No, thank you, uh, Prof. Uh, JJ. Um, let me first start by greeting all the captains of the industries that are here. I see quite a few. Uh, let me also greet the captains of bureaucracy. Um, <laughs> uh, the leaders of various business forums here. Uh, I see some Kazan Crowd Coalition representatives. Uh, our sister, CEO of the Deppen Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Usizupa uh, Lisa, uh, MPLs uh, who are here, uh, mayors and councillors, leaders of various political parties, uh, including the traditional leadership. Uh, let me also extend our special greetings uh, to the two ministers who are part of this program. Uh, the Minister of Police, Undosi, Siabengalela, Siabengalela, and Minister Usile, Uzigalala, Kuzen, Siabong, Minister of Public Works, uh, even though he uh, got the uh, NGECO rights uh, health wise, but uh, he committed to attending and he even made sure that even though he can't be here, but he will join us virtually, Siabonga Kuzen. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Gan Bengalel. Ikabala Mungu Wanda Baga Chakra, Uno Pala Chigalele, we PPF, E Black Business Federation. Uh, I am given the task here uh, to welcome you, uh, but also we would like to take this opportunity to introduce uh, ourselves uh, because we we do know for a fact that we are firstly misunderstood, misrepresented also. Uh, and uh, today uh, I would like to introduce uh, uh, ourselves to you, ladies and gentlemen. The BPF is a confederation of grassroots business forums. Uh, from various localities uh, of South Africa. But we started here in KZN, uh, so predominantly we, we exist here, but we are a national organization. We represent uh, various groupings that have interest in businesses, various business forums, uh, even chambers. We have a chamber now, in Tuzum we have a chamber, and that's who we represent. And those that we represent, represent small businesses uh, in, in their areas who want to participate <coughs> uh, and be included in the mainstream economy. Well, largely in the construction industry. Uh, we are a registered organization with CIPC. We have a constitution, we have leadership, we have policies, uh, we subscribe to the constitution of this country, which empowers us uh, to group ourselves, which is why we've established ourselves as BPF and organize ourselves under the banner of BPF and its vision and mission of, because we, 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 we can't run away from the fact that the economy of South Africa remains untransformed. It's in the hands of white people here in Kansas and it's in the hands of Indians who don't want to share with the majority who are Africans. Uh, so we exist uh, 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 to ensure that we, we, we transform the economy because we are worried that as much as South Africa have the constitution, have good policies, uh, have good uh, 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 laws, but those laws are seemingly uh, 
are, are requesting that we request you, white business and big business, to empower small business. So we, we can't have and we can't have our policies of whole men that's an that's a seemingly unapologetic, that's apologizing for transformation. Especially if government is going to be spending money on infrastructure. So government can give you a billion as a company and then say, please empower. So policies should be enforced enforcing. So BPF position on government policies, that's government policies must in a way uh, 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 be enforced, you know, enforce transformation and empowerment. So we subscribe then to what we call radical economic transformation as a way to say policies should have shift towards true empowerment, not the request, but as, as, as a whole order. So BPF is, is, is who we are. So we, we are not a construction mafia, uh, and we, 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 we reject this name, because in our understanding, a mafia is a, a, a highly organized group, uh, which is of an international level with resources and, and, and power, which we, we, we don't, we, we, which we don't have uh, uh, as BPF and all our members. We are just a group of uh, historically disadvantaged people who want to participate and be included in the mainstream economy. So that's who is BPF and that's what we stand for. Now, when, 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 when in 2014, uh, 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 15, uh, local business forum were, were, were being established in many areas, Kwama, Shumla, Clermont, uh, so they wanted to participate in, in big projects. I remember in Wamashu, there was a, a project called Pixley Isayagase Memorial Hospital, which was launched by the president of the country, uh, Umungame Lucy Ramaphosa, uh, recently. So that project at that time was still under construction, two, two, two billion and, and, and something. So when the local business forum of Inc and wanted to participate. The main contracts are one, did not want to give them a platform to engage. Secondly, when they had an, an, an opportunity to engage with the main contracts, but the main contracts gave them all reasons that they can't participate. Uh, one, we have our own domestic subcontractors, two, you don't qualify, you don't have capacity, uh, and etc., etc. Et so then the local business forum then said, look, we will want to have an engagement with the Department of Health, but whilst doing that, please, uh, can the projects pause? Uh, then this, I think, translates into stoppage. And then in various uh, 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 localities, uh, then projects were, were, were stopped. Then BPF, in engaging with the municipalities and the government, said, look, let us organize all this business forum under one umbrella so that we start to engage a EU government and many contractors for their participation. Because what they are now doing is costing the economy and government. So BPF is a solution to site stoppages to assist government and the private sector for projects to be implemented without stoppages. So but we are now a victim of being a good Samaria uh, because at least we are those who are known. Uh, now we are told that we are the construction mafia with this step project. We don't do that. We are a solution to government. And we've been a solution uh, ever since then. So that's who we are. PPF and we are not a construction mafia. We don't stop projects. We 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 don't extort money on 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 on, on projects. Uh, and we 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 really do not subscribe to that. And we are declaring here to say we we are prepared to work with government to ensure that we find lasting solutions into these problems. Now let us give you a practical example where there is 
cooperation and partnership with PPF and the projects are not being disturbed. One, as my, 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 my colleague uh, 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 hit a uh, rose and told us, Sunral is implementing N2 N3. More than 30 billion uh, being implemented. But that's project, you can call the Sunral CEO today, you can call the chairperson, you can call the leader of the Eastern region. Those, that's projects running smoothly, no stoppages, nothing, because BPF is there. Because BPF believes that there are a couple of solutions that uh, uh, we need uh, uh, to implement, uh, or this government needs to adopt and implement, if government wants to address the issue of project stoppages and extortion, which are criminal elements. Because to us, uh, uh, those who stop sites and those who, who don't want to work on projects, those are just pure criminal elements. This must not, this must not be blanket as economic tagger. No, no, no. Criminal elements should be treated as criminal elements. And business people seeking opportunities must be treated as such. They need to be. There needs to be a distinction. Uh, so we are happy that Undo Somkulu is here uh, uh, from uh, 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 the, the police minister. And we welcome the, 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 the units that is established by the president uh, to deal with this mess. But what we, 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 we want to caution the government is for these units to, be, to, to, to not be manipulated by big business to block transformation. Because th there is a stress. There's once there is this unit uh, established for this, and then there's the mafia, then when genuine people want to participate in projects, they are then uh, labeled as questionable mafia, and then the unit is called, and then people get to be arrested. No, that such can happen, but we are not saying that those who do this uh, 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 purely as a criminal element must be arrested. So this is why we're saying this. As PPF, we want government to recognize us properly as they do, as they recognize SAFSEC. SAFSEC is a forum, as they recognize BUSA, BUSA is a forum, as they recognize a Growth Coalition, it's a forum. Uh, it's not a government NCT uh, 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 or an agency. So the very same relationship uh, that is afforded to the Depp and Chamber of Commerce and Industry and the coalition and both must be afforded to the PPF. So this we also sit in these strategic uh, tables that takes decision and we add our radicalism to say Yes, we, we, we appreciate this, this must happen, but in order for it to benefit people, this is our view. Because now we end up sharing our views with contractors in boardroom who makes no decision, but we want to engage with our government and make our contribution into the uh, development of this economy. Because we are committed into this economy being developed. We are committed to government infrastructure rollers program without uh, 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 being disturbed, but all we want is for it to happen with our participation. So we, 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 we have successful projects even in the private sector. Midway crossing in Newlands, we, we work very well with the, with the investor and the contractor in those projects. It's also happened without um, a, a disturbance because there was proper inclusion, proper consultation, and BPF views were, 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 were well accommodated. Because as BPF, all we are saying is this, in all government projects, they have to be social facilitation. Because what becomes a problem, a CEO, a, a Cispalisa in these projects, is the lack of consultation with communities and community structures, including councillors, government officials, councillors. At times, they have no proper information about projects. Then now, when people go to councillors, councillors can answer. Local structures, same. When local businesses go to them uh, to inquire about the projects, they don't have information. Same. When, 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 when even political parties, various of them, when people go to their leaders, they don't have proper information. Because one, people want opportunities, and communities want employment. So both these elements, a, 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 a social element of the project. So if they are not well consulted, not involved, not caught into the project, then they, 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 they cause problems for the project. But if, if social facilitation of 
communities and structures is well coordinated in projects, uh, 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 there are no issues. Midway, midway, mid, uh, midway mall, you can, you can, you can engage uh, 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 in those projects. They, 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 there are no issues because there are proper consultation. Then we, we call for enterprise development because, yes, our people have lacked opportunities because of our historical background and they want to participate. So if they don't have skills, so we encourage uh, big companies uh, to, 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 to transfer skills. So to also assist so that uh, 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 they can also be uh, proper businesses and they can also grow. And then also CSI because communities have got elements. So projects need to also uh, 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 invest you know, in community social initiatives. So that is the PPF framework. So we are committed into uh, 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 ensuring that uh, 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 the economy grows a uh, uh, project uh, get to be implemented. Uh, our demonstration to this commitment is that we even invested our our own little resources into this program, just as our commitment to this. We want to find solutions with government and the private sector and all stakeholders. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you to this frank dialogue on construction mafia and the solutions to the future. This is part of our solution. We will also share more on, on when we are on the panel. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Please give him a round of applause again. And once again, just to appreciate that the the Black Business Federation kept their word. We had we, we were here a couple of weeks ago in a frank dialogue on the national health insurance, and they said no, we want one that will deal with the economy. Um, and then I said, well, you know, they don't, these things don't cost water and prayer. You know, can you just sign a check and we'll do it? So they did so. So please give them, give them another round of applause. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think the starters on the tables, feel free to dig in, because otherwise you're going to starve and we've got a very long night ahead. Um, can I ask the, the CEO of the CIDB to come and uh, Mr. Dada uh, to, to come and welcome the guests as well. Thank you, Dad. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Prof. Um, I'm not going to block you. Uh, I'm quite <laughs> curious, uh, my brother, who won the upper Guti, when he refers to CIDB, are we uh, captains of industry or captains of bureaucracy? I would be very interested <laughs> to understand that view. <laughs> Uh, Honorable uh, Minister Ubabu Kuzeni, Nobabundosi, uh, thank you very much, and all political leaders that are available. I've seen a couple of mayors and uh, members of um, uh, various councils in the province, uh, the distinguished panel that will talk to us also later on to get us to discussing some of these issues with the purpose of coming to solutions, the various industry formations, uh, BBF being one of them that is here, uh, our board members from the CIDP, I've seen also uh, members of public works and infrastructure, both in the province, both nationally and in the province led by DDG um, uh, Kuseni, and also all uh, industry leaders that are here today on this important discussion. CIDP is an entity of public works and infrastructure that is tasked with the role of providing strategic leadership in the industry with the sole mandate of developing the industry and transforming the industry. So a topic like this is quite important to us and also moving it beyond discussions, uh, seminars, but getting it to coming up with solutions uh, through our commitments to partnerships with all our stakeholders that are playing in the sector. And there's no doubt that each and everyone here, I had a look at the guest list earlier today, each and everyone here makes a contribution to that. So as the CIDP having focusing ourselves in ensuring we regulate in a manner that is transformative, but also accelerates the delivery of infrastructure to ensure service delivery, 
and also uh, and employment in our economy. We look forward to also both the criticism, the solutions that will be brought here, and I promise uh, JJ in our last discussion that we will be taking these contributions and see which one of them requires us to change regulations, which one requires us to change government policy, and which one of those requires us to provide guidance to all infrastructure clients as to how uh, we implement projects. So we look forward as a CIDP uh, under the leadership of the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure to a frank dialogue that is solution driven and also answers key questions around how to improve the delivery of infrastructure in a transformative manner, how to ensure inclusive growth of the industry, and how do we fully partner with each other, because infrastructure is quite important for the country. Although it contributes 3% to GDP, but it contributes quite significantly to employment. It helps us deal with the service delivery challenges that we face as a country. It also provides economic opportunities for us to truly have a transformed and a inclusive economy. I thank you all. I look forward to this frank dialogue and I look forward to the participations, especially of our two ministers and the panelists that have been assembled uh, by Prof and the team. Uh, and we look forward to learning from these discussions so that we can take action. I thank you all. Uh, thank you, my brother. And once again, thank you for keeping your word. Um, uh, to, 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 support, to support this work, and hopefully this won't be the last. We still have, you know, uh, what? Seven other provinces to go to, and I'm quite sure that this problem is not confined to Gauteng and, and KwaZulu Natal. Um, without any waste of time, if you can ask the team to come and remove this podium. Minister Kale, uh, uh, we have to, before dinner, we've got to provoke people you know, uh, together with the Minister of Public Works. So please come and join me here uh, as the team removes the podium and we settle down to start the dialogue. Minister Zigalala. We can hear you now, Minister. Good evening. Good evening to you, good evening to Minister uh, of Police, Minister Trader, Trader. Uh, good evening to uh, the board, board, the business uh, federation as well as the CIPP and the entire leadership, especially I saw there in the participants, the mayor of even the district, Ubaba Usandi and Lela and all participants are there. All right, thank you. Let's get straight into it, Minister. So while we have you, because you know with this technology, you never know how long we have you. Let's just go straight into it. Right. Um, fortunately, this is the second conversation we are having, and I'm sure you have had some thoughts since the last conversation we had in Johannesburg. In summary, right, how would you characterize where we are now in as far as this issue of the construction mafia is concerned? And in summary, what are, is your department doing to tackle this issue once and for all? Well, I think the first, starting from what we discussed last, week, last time, the first thing I think we emphasize all the past on the need for social context. And I think it's in the preliminary discussions that have taken place today are uh, echoing the same view. Social context that brings all stakeholders together the big business, the small business, and the emergency with a common purpose, a common purpose of locally growing the economy and ensuring that there is no one who is left behind, as President Ramaphosa is saying. I think uh, the speakers, such as uh, Mr. Andrew Patiela, for the group condition, who have played a difficult role in this regard, have had some experience. The experience of the 
and the agreement between the broad coalition and the government. But the experience of the engagement between the government and giving forums that are genuinely standing as associations of entrepreneurs who are willing to be trained, registered, and supported to enter this. Now, we do need to work on that. I was charged when the, the I believe it's the secretary in this welcoming remarks when he said, they also need business or, or enterprise development. Those are elements of this social compact we are talking about. So, few pillars. Pillar number one is to ensure that there is a common engagement for common people. Pillar number two is to ensure that there is a dedicated business development program to localization. How local entrepreneurs benefit and change or attach to that is pillar number three, which will be about enterprise development. Pillar number four is the growth of the general economy. Because even the big business do need to grow and the small business do need to grow. Then pillar number five for me will be the enforcement of law. Enforcement of law, because we are giving police the extra task. It is not the task of police to deal with economic transformation. The police is to deal with those who are wrong. And therefore, let us assist each other on the question of those who want to be in business and deal with it. And without taking it from my diet, the time I left the province, I believe the business had been communicating with the police. Thanks to uh, Lieutenant uh, General Kwanazi for the work he is doing, and I believe that is still continuing. So I would say those are five areas that I believe we need to embark on. Uh, both government, the, 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 the business, big business, and small business. Civil society also, in particular the media and the academic, do need to participate in this educational uh, approach. And that's why I would want to close by thanking you for hosting this science. All right. Uh, I, I want to come to, to before I get to the to Minister of, of, of Police and that they, uh, Zigalal, is there, uh, from, from a point of view of intergovernmental collaboration, right, are you satisfied, because now we are, we are talking here in terms of KwaZulu Natal, that there is an economic strategy, right, in KwaZulu Natal in particular, as we speak, right, don't talk to me historically because you are here, Premier, and so on. I'm talking about today in terms of intergovernmental collaboration, all the things that you are saying, which sound nice, do they cascade to the province from a point of view of having an economic strategy here that would eventually arrest this pro problem? Minister? In terms of intergovernmental relations, uh, 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 I would say we are working with uh, uh, as the Department of Public Work and Infrastructure, we coordinate the partaking of all projects that are strategic and impactful when it comes to the issue of infrastructure. So, if you see, for example, most of the projects which have gone through this pipeline in the, in, in the, in the infrastructure South Africa. This project of what are packaged by infrastructure South Africa and then transferred to the Department of Water and Sanitation for implementation. So national department must always coordinate with the province and local municipalities. That's why I can speak with authority because between municipal and province, there's been engagement on projects of water with the provincial government as well as municipalities. On issues of infrastructure development that we are running ourselves, we have been in interacting with relevant departments in the province that are affected by those infrastructure projects. We are also communicating with our land banking department, which is the Department of Public Works. So in terms of intergovernmental relationship, there, are, there is synergy, though I will always say, 
All right. Thank you. We'll come back to you, Minister. Let me come to you, Minister. Uh, uh, the, the, I want to ask a very simple question here. Right. And I'm not being simplistic, but can you tell me over on overall terms, are we winning the war against crime in this area of construction and infrastructure? Given that we seem to be losing it in other broader areas, if you look at the statistics, crime in transit, contact crimes, and so on. But on this particular one, would you say we're winning, we're, we're beginning to arrest it, and, and, and the people involved are beginning to understand that, that they, they cannot get away with just a blank check on this? Someone minister. <laughs> yeah, okay. Or, uh, no. <laughs> Is it home advantage? Yeah, I don't know why you brought me here. In Northwest, yeah. I'm, I'll take you into my home next time. JJ, let's put a little bit of a, of a history on this particular thing. I'm yeah. born and bred in this province. I was born in a place called Poshepsin. Yeah. And I grew up there. My father was a railway worker. Mm. We grew up poor, but I would not uh, tell lies would he, we ever slept in Gali, they know. Sasi, and Jekai and all that kind of thing. But mm. my father made sure what he, we, we ate. My mother worked for Miss Moore. I suspect maybe my song, when I said my mother was a kitchen girl, is a real song for me. Okay. So, I, I, I understand. So I moved to a township uh, when my parents died. My mother died very young and my father. So I moved with my aunt in a township called Lamontville. Mm. It's a very, <laughs> it, it, you, you put it in a similarity with Alex in Lamont. Oh, yeah. 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 That time, I don't know now, but yeah. that time, it's moon. Yeah. Yeah. One thing, one thing that uh, put me in politics is, I used to visit my father, who was an Induna in a compound. Yeah. But he was Induna, but a deputy of a manager. Yeah. Mlung was a manager, my father was Induna, but was a deputy. So I suspect maybe this time black people were not allowed to call managers. So he would, he, he would tell me, with he, both of them, uh, I must work hard so that as I grow up, it was a railway worker. When my father died, he died very young at 44. So I went to Mlung and said, please, man, can you give me money to go to school so that I wanted to pen attain? I don't want to pen attain today. I can explain why. <laughs> so Mlung looked at me. I, I believe genuinely was a was a good with my father because he looked at me with a very watery eye and said, look, man, we can't send you to school because the policy of the company railway at that time, we can't send black people to school because So that conscientized me. He told me that there was something wrong with me. I had to look around and if I can be a part of the solution of the situation. Yeah. That's how I was drawn in politics. Yeah. yeah. So maybe that's a history and all that kind of thing. But we grew up, uh, we, we were in politics and all that. Uh, at one time, I was a, a chair of this region, yes, at yeah. uh, 2010, around there, there was a lot of work around the uh, stadia change. Construction. Construction, yes. And, uh, and, and just change of hands of the economy. One of the big change. So, what, 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 one major change that happened, people must say, you will understand, was a transport issue that moved from the city to the hands. I, I guess it's still in that black hands. The transport you see at Tewin, that deepened transport yeah. is under the black hands. Yeah. So, we had to work hard as we were political leadership here. Uh, the construction of uh, construction of uh, this stadium uh, in, in Mabida, there was a lot of black, I can call names, but uh, 
discussion here doesn't put names. Kambe will just stay away from names. But there were people that were involved and became millionaires. Yeah. Uh, I saw some few of them here, uh, those, those part of that. So I became a member of executive here, MSC. So I hear people calling themselves ministers. My ministers are national, my province are my MECs. Okay. So I was an MEC for, for, for trans... It's for, only in the Western Cape for, they are ministers. And you always call them, don't call them ministers. So <laughs> I was an MEC for transport. Yeah. It, it, transport is one area where there is money that can be transferable from government to, to local people and ordinary business. Uh, JJ, I can argue that you can take me to all communities when I was that thing. Yeah. Take me to Msinga, take me to Nganda, take me to Poshepstein. One thing that we worked on is that money as it comes there must big portion or some portion must stay with the people on that particular area. In that, in that, in that community? Yes, yes, in that community. So we'll meet Amakosi, that's why um, Kosungubana, I know them very well, Onkosu um, and all, I met all those Amakosi, yeah. talking on these matters, Onkosu um, South Coast and all those, to say, when you come here, you don't sweep everything. Uh, should be the skills that are not part of this community that you bring from outside. But yeah. those that are here, uh, the skills of Kubi Bala real, you can't bring it from Wamash and yeah. then take it to MCN and all that. But if there are other skills, well, so during my tenure as an MSC, we built a lot of the called access roads and a lot of including pedestrian bridges because our kids could not cross the rivers, mm -hmm. Bemuga and all the way I'm up again, uh, I, I went to one school where girls every morning will wait for boys to cross them the river and boys will tell the girls the school in Guting Yalazi Pendla Kutlinja because that, that how humiliating was it for the girls to strip naked to be crossed by the boys and all, so things like those. We did not yeah, finish. Yeah, but what went wrong? Because what you are describing seems to be like a community. <laughs> so that was that, Nama preach, lot of preaches and all that. Yeah. So if people they are fair, they, they can understand. But JJ, then there is a, a resolution of the of the governing party of the radical economic transformation. Mm. Now, for some reason, I don't know where, it became some form of a political separation of those that they want and those that they don't want. Yeah. Because the others did not believe in the radical economic transformation in their view. Well, once, one, once is a, a resolution of the, the organization that I belong to, everybody must believe in it. Yeah. But everybody also must live within the laws as you go forward to do it. Mm. I heard Mkaiwa uh, Muchata, I heard Mbuvu, saying there is no, nothing called to try, uh, Construction Mafia. Econ. 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 It, it might not be organized maybe as, as, as we think, but th there are things that are terrible that are happening there. I had this explanation. It's very unfortunate that I've never been invited to, to sit down with, uh, to listen and all that. My, my job yeah. is to enforce the law and whoever breaks the law. I, I hear there is, they say nothing of that sort. Last, two, two last Fridays, one known gentleman here who runs a transport industry in the north of Durban went to one site with 12 armed people last week. Yeah. Not the very last Friday, the other one, on a Friday. 12 armed people. They in head. They Yeah. 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 So he came in this, 
Yeah. This is a private business. I'm going to never hold me in. Yeah. What you want, my daughter? Sorry, please come and help the minister with the ear. What you want, my daughter? I'm going to say, pretty me. It's gotten unstuck. Uh, Sek pete mi nada. Yeah. Uh, Bao 12, ba am. 12, 12, am. Am. Gats. And it's, nga pande wog rana i, 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 industry, yeah. i transport. Urana ama, urana ama, security. Security. Yeah. Now, the security, by the way, I go in the ark. Arana is security. U tata wong, and I must affiliate again. My problem, Java Bekela, the Puma, so I call in about Tazan Ropa mean, La Babatilla. If that is not a mafia, when I come to your private job with 12 armed people, yeah. and I say from now on here, it's me, and you get out, and those people, they phone police, are my owners. Uh, fortunately, or unfortunately for them, Mababonang would say be parati zul. Ngoba, ama owners, aba lega. But they left them a track, aba block, aba wazu, pu, mama poisa zaba fitka parati. Zaba bob. Twelve of them. Sorry, I need to interrupt you a little bit there. The, 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 the gentleman who spoke uh, first uh, to, tonight, right, who said that, that the issue is that the label of mafia tends to be given to maybe people who actually all they are looking for are economic opportunities. And, and it, it's a brush than just everyone who wants come to come in there to say, I want the 30%, I want to participate. They say, no, these people are mafia. Instead of separating the criminal element from the genuine people. I think, I mean, I mean paraphrasing, but don't you think that's a genuine distinction we need to be making? Okay. That's what I say, it must no be mafia. The it must be the job for all of us. Mm. from the law enforcement and themselves. Mm. Themselves must distance themselves from those kind of people, JJ. They okay. must distance themselves from those kind of people yeah. who behave like that. People who, who went to, when the, when the court was built, the high court here, yeah. they blocked it. We arrested somebody there. Mm. Uh, you, you know, this is national. People that are arrested for taking over Maybe let me explain this kind of mafia. It, it, it differs, JJ, from place to place. Yeah. There are genuine South Africans that are, right, are running business and that must be given those opportunities. Yeah. I, I, I love this thing of Sunrise. I love it. Mm. By the way, I've been explained about it. I know it very well and all that kind of stuff. It's fine when everybody sits down and talk about it. It's explained mm. to me, explained by the provincial commissioner who himself approves it. Yeah. But among those, among those people, yeah. there are people that would not be part of those communities and they go to take over even from those people. That's why I said, you see, JJ, there are names that are known around the country. I'm not going to, I'm not going to call the names. I went to Mamelodi. I went to Mamelodi. Well, unfortunately, I'll be talking about the national picture, not necessarily yeah. the case at I will emphasize, I'll come back here. Yeah. I went to Mamelodi, I had a meeting with the community. 27 people talk, spoke, 27. Yeah. It's only the 27th person in what I'm prepared to die. Die because over? What everybody here is lying. Yo. So and so, so and so, so and so, so and so, la. Yeah. Every aunt who, who sells a banana, this yeah. guy collects a 50% ah, of the banana sold. That that's day. extortion. Yeah. So what if he can kill me? If every garage here pays some tax to that particular person for every liter that is sold, the garage now. That person is in prison. Yeah, you are, you are arrested. Then. That person is in prison. He has been there for two years. He was found guilty in July. I don't know why they're not sentencing him now. They started a little bit in November, but <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, 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 that's what happened. But bottom line? The, the, the bottom line yeah. is that 
You stopped everybody that started business there, even, even them. So they, and they allow us themselves to pay tax. Yeah. For, you, you buy petrol, you pay salaries, but you still pay some money for a liter to that particular person, and you agree on it. And you don't, call, you don't want me to call you a mafia. As you behave like that. So you insist there is a mafia, the, 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 we just need to deal it, with it separately. Definitely. Yeah. And there are people that are doing business and must be given opportunities and all that. And yeah. there are people that are in business that are jealous and people that are greedy and that. But what I would not agree with the move yeah. is that those are only white people. Yeah. People that shoot people and kill them in Mubu are not Abelung. It's us. A young boy who has killed the only for the for the project of 20, 28 billion that is supposed to happen there was killed by two people. Unfortunately, those two people are members of the South African police, a black and an Indian. They shot and killed him. So we're trying to find out which Uban or Mtum. As you sit here, we TikTok move. You are not going to tell me, you are not going to tell me that you did not see a young man here who went to TikTok and shouted to say every person of take what is take what TikTok, whatever. Every person of Uber. He, he, he made that announcement with everybody, Uber, everybody in Bangin will pay 100 rand at the month end again. You are not going to tell me what a year has learned. You know it. All right. Yeah. And, and then, that's not only thing I answer. That one you should announce. Yeah. But he was moving to every aunt and picking up the 50% of the mate on a day who are selling bananas there. That's what he was doing. Yeah. That was just an announcement of everybody here. They knew. And they died here in this, in this place where we are. Yeah. So th 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 that's, that's, that's a kind of occupation. You go and take your work that you have worked for. Yeah. That's a kind of tainting, working with the people, hiding under people that are genuine with the work. Yeah. There is another one that is sophisticated, JJ. They come to your business. They come with the speed point. Speed point. Yeah, speed yeah. point. They say in your business, everybody that pays now will pay to this speed point, not in your speed point. So you are working, but money doesn't come to you. Bible. Yes, CJ. That's what is happening. If you don't call that person a mafia, what do you call that person is? You are running your business, but every man you cook high, you cook a little but the business yeah. was good here. Young people but here. And you glorifying them by saying mafia. Isn't that just criminal? I don't care element? what you call it. This country, yeah. there are young business people who are genuine, who are living in exile. Yeah. Yes. One, I'm not going to tell the country. Took all the family, went to exile because, because they're some, afraid of this. Because somebody came and took that business to say from now on nothing goes to your account. All everything goes. And unfortunately, we're all going to Zimbabwe. Yeah. yeah right, I to, so I have the, to the, pause. Maybe yeah. we, we can revisit the name mafia. Mafia. Yeah. Now, but now we, we're we, talking. We can revisit, yeah. but that no criminality that is happening yeah. there in a big scale. It can't big be scale. True. All right. Let's pause now because we're going to uh, uh, prepare to go live at eight o'clock. Uh, please, just give me a round of applause. I know you don't agree with everything he's saying. You will have a chance to sort him out just now. Okay. But we're going to take a quick break. Minister, I want me. you to go don't and... Don't launch me. <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to go there and have a starter. Okay. At, uh, so that we can just prepare to go on air at 8 o'clock. We're relaxed. We're having dinner. And we're going to have a good conversation. So we're going to have to do testing now. And at 8 o'clock, we cross. So I'll start again with the ministers at 8 o'clock. Now, this we're now doing it for the public now. And then... The panel will come, we start the dialogue, and every one of you will have a chance uh, uh, to, uh, to do that. So, so please do caucus, uh, finish off the status. Um, I, I, you'll have to bear with us because we're running out of time. So we're going to eat after the broadcast, okay? So eat now what you can in front of you.
because at 8 o'clock it's over until half past 9. <laughs> the dinner is going to be late, unfortunately. It's part of the truth with Mon Kopote, JJ Dawani. Tonight we're coming to you from uh, the capital Zimbali at a frank dialogue on the construction mafia. Of course, it's with a heavy heart tonight that we say Hambaka uh, to one of the legends of South African music, Zahara, uh, who passed on last night. Uh, we hope that her family uh, can find con consolate, con comfort uh, in all of the messages of support pouring from far and wide about the talent that she left us with. So we say uh, uh, condolences to them and rest in peace, uh, Zahara. Here at the capital Zimbali, frank dialogue about to commence, in fact, has already commenced, uh, on the construction mafia. And my guest of honor is the Minister of Police, Minister Becky Kele, as well as the Minister of Public Works, Minister Sitle uh, Zigalala, who's joining us online, and a throng, um, I must say, of uh, just some 150 um, uh, uh, stakeholders, business people, entrepreneurs, leaders, political leaders, civil society leaders, business leaders, uh, under the auspices of various business organizations, such as the business, Black Business Federation, um, amongst others, who are here tonight to, to dissect this issue of the construction mafia. Does it exist? Is it there? And if it's there, what is the solution? How do we take this forward? And of course, tonight, 90 minutes special. You stay tuned there as we bring you this dialogue uh, from the capital Zimbali out here in KwaZulu. Of course, uh, the holiday season has started and if uh, you are strolling ar along these areas, this is one of the areas you, want, you may wanna visit uh, uh, to chill, but of course, there's also fear out here, and yesterday we were talking about crime in this place, etc. So opposite that we have the Minister of Police here, who will tell us, are we in the war uh, against crime and criminality, or are we losing that war? And this area of the construction mafia is only one element of that particular war um, that as he's been telling us just before we went on air here, that indeed there is a, an issue here to be addressed. I'm going to be talking to both these ministers, Minister Sitle <coughs> Zigala, as well as Minister uh, of Police. Let me pick it up, Minister, from earlier of what we said. Thank you so much, and, and good evening to you, Minister. Um, and thanks once again for making the time to talk to us. Pick it up for those who were not was listening earlier on without repeating uh, everything. Right? How are we getting on top of this phenomenon? There are people here who initially, uh, as we started, said, actually there's no ma construction mafia, is a terrible label, you know, it's often a label given to black people who are trying to be, to have economic opportunities, etc. and the state is on top of them. In fact, there's somebody here who accused uh, the government of, of uh, just coming down hard on these people who are trying to eke a living out of opportunities in construction. Kick us off uh, in that conversation, Minister. Thanks, uh, uh, JJ, and the, the, your audience. Uh, as you have said, there are eminent people seated here when mm. it comes to construction. Mm. Uh, the crux of the matter is that there is no one size fits all on this matter. Mm. We can't say people in construction is just mafia, yeah. but we can't say there is no mafiasm within that Mafia industry, mm. within that yeah. industry. So we'll have to separate. Mm. But I'm sure you have invited this gathering, yeah. not just to have dinner and talk and look one another uh, uh, but yeah. also to try and find solution. Yeah, and the dinner is part of it as well, so that they, they don't fight each other. Well, you know? I'm not sure. <laughs> The, the, the solution will come from two things. Maybe mm. uh, I, I was just wondering why you invited me here. Uh, because this is an issue that people that are involved there should be dealing with it. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we have a responsibility that, we, that we need to combat, prevent, investigate, 
uphold the law, but most importantly, enforce the law. Mm. Once they get out of what they're supposed to do, yeah. we must enforce the law. Mm. We are, if there was no mafia here, if there was no big, not just criminal element, big criminal element, there would be no people that are in prison that yeah. have been arrested and all that. Mm. But is it genuine that the black people should not be given the opportunities? No. They must get opportunities. Yeah. They must get opportunities to those that accumulated them before yeah. uh, people were there to be given. Up. By the way, poverty in this country at one time, JJ, was legislated. Yeah. Ignorance, being uneducated, was legislated. So we know the education uh, bill or act of 1952, 1954, banned to education and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So that put people at the back foot that they have not been there yeah. up to this point. Now, these opportunities must be given by the government, though it will be through the governing party at the present moment, hence the radical economic transformation. Mm. That on what is there, people must be given opportunities, but people must still work. Mm. People, they can't just come and grab. That is what is happening. Yeah. Grabbing, you can't tell me that you are working when you go to a work site. You and your 12 armed big guys, and you tell the owner of that place that from now on, I'm taking over, you can go home. That happened two Fridays ago in this province, mm. not very far from here. Mm. And if you don't... But, but does it, sorry, just the, doesn't that show a level of lawlessness, right, that the police are failing to arrest? If people can arrive at the site with 12 guns and start shooting but people... But JJ, I told you who arrested those people, man. <laughs> oh, JJ... We arrested them, 12 yes, of them. But in the first place, the fact that they were able to do the yes, you arrested them. But, but I'm saying, Minister, that's anecdotal in a bigger scheme of things, isn't it? Don't you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, if you just have to look at your statistics that says, you know, there's rampant crime. So I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is, are we, are we winning that war as the police? And, 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 and my suspicion is maybe not. Don't deviate me that I talk about crime general and all that. I know you, you, you follow statistics, JJ. Uh, if, if you say we're not dealing with crime, uh, mm. but I don't want to get out of this one. Yeah. But you, you see, since May 8 mm. until this Monday, we have arrested 259,772 South Africans. On construction mafia or reagents in general? Uh, when I'm using a crime general, <laughs> stick to the, to the point, JJ. We yeah. will all stick to the point. Yeah. So let's talk Let let's come to back. the construction thing. Yes. You don't think they were winning or losing? We, we, we will have to work all together. Yeah. We, it can't be the law enforcement alone. Yeah. I, I listened before now, some mm. of talking, yeah. I've said to them before now, they will have to distance themselves from those particular people that they use them as an umbrella mm. to say is a radical economic transformation, you are hungry and all that. If you are mm. hungry, you can then take 12 guns yeah. and go, you take the sight of people. <coughs> if those people were are, 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 are private people. Yeah. One, one site in, in Pretoria where there is a, a building now is continuing. What happened, JJ? The community came together and appointed the subcontractors, all communities in that, in that era say, so and so and so and so, so from the community. And the company that is building, they said, thank you very much. Mm. But on the day of start, they went, they went, a group of people went with guns there to say, you are not going to start. Mm. The community said, but we have been sitting we have, we have been talking about this. And you are even undermining the community that is there. So the issue of people jetting in and jetting out with the yeah. construction without taking care of, community, of communities, we can't, 
We can't deny it altogether. All right. Let's, let's go to Minister Zigalal on that score. Minister Zigalal, if you can hear, hear me, can you just weigh in on the issue of economic plan, right? Is there, in your view, between the province and the national, a solid economic plan that eventually, right, can obviate the need for communities to go into sites and say, we want to be here and so on and try and force themselves? No, thanks, JJ. I can hear you well, uh, though you didn't give me the status that you've been eating. <laughs> on the point you are raising, on the point you are raising, I think there is a plan. When the president presented the economic reconstruction and recovery plan, he said infrastructure will be a flywheel of economic development. And that's why we have packaged a number of projects that relate to infrastructure throughout the country to ensure that we stimulate the economy and benefit as many people as possible. Mm. That's why as the Department of Public Works, we are pushing hard to ensure that infrastructure projects that have been delayed, whether they are courts, police stations, home affairs offices, are fast tracked. A few weeks ago, I was in the very same district where you are, together with Mayor uh, Shande, attending, pushing the implementation of the courts and all of that. So we are rolling out infrastructure. The critical issue here, we have taken time debating about the first and the second economy with less decisive actions to transform and close the gap. And when the, uh, the, the regulations that says let's have 30% localization, it was not well defined. Is the local a local municipality, a district municipality, or a province? Others even said a local is South Africa, you regard it domestically. Now, that is the problem. On one hand, there have been people who are disrupting sites, which yeah. is wrong and criminality. On the other hand, you have a business community, the constructors, moving from big cities to another city, constructing to the very same companies they've been working with throughout the years, undermining the principle of localization. And you find that they will subcontract to their own subsidiaries or companies of their relatives or friends. That yeah. then undermines the process of economic transformation. And those are things we must address yeah. with speed. Do, do you say that's exactly what is causing the conflict in communities and that therefore then gets labeled construction mafia? Two points. It is genuine that there are communities who are concerned, who see projects coming into their localities and they get nothing. Mm. But there are those who come and extort money, and those are criminals and must be dealt with. As the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, we have established a facilitation unit that ensures that wherever we are implementing projects, we go down to communities, we brief the communities, we try to establish together with the municipalities, establish the some kind of your, your, your register of local companies, a, a database of local companies, so that there will be a fair process of ensuring that local companies benefit. And that's what we are talking about when we say we have put in place the facilitation framework to localize the implementation of infrastructure projects. All right, before we go to a break, Minister, uh, after the break, we're going to be bringing stakeholders to talk about what needs to be done. From where you are sitting, what would assist the police, right, to be part of the solution on this issue? <coughs> what, what challenge can you put in front of stakeholders, the communities, etc., on this? Because this is a, a, a phenomenon that's worrying even many communities. JJ, I want to pick where Utatu Zigalala left it. There are communities that are genuinely aggrieved. Mm. Uh, w without going generic, 
One of those is a community called Chetty in Eastern Cape, Ekkerberg. The company there is supposed to build the police station. Mm. It brought everything, even the shovel from Johannesburg. Mm. Even the shovel from Johannesburg. Even, even the removal of this thing they call uh, in construction uh, site clearance. Mm. That could be done by everybody in oil. They brought those people from Johannesburg. That company was stopped. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the taken to court to stop, a new company came mm. with a lot of local people. But as that company and local people came, people with guns came. Mm. And now to displace those local people. Sure. Now, they were not there to be part of, <coughs> of, 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 of becoming the part of work and, and all that uh, tendering, no. They waited for these people. They say to them, if you don't give us the job, give us the percentage of the money that you will make. make. So percentage of your profit, basically. No, no more job, money yeah. itself. Money. What do you call that? For no job, for, for no, no job. work done. For no work done. And th those people, some of them, they left, even those that have genuinely, through the community, found the job. So that, that's that. That's what I'm saying to the to BPF and those that are here. Distance yeah. yourself from those people. Mm. Let's all of them isolate them. But we can't just be part of isolation. We need to enforce the law, because yeah. if you come with the gun and the and, and the construction site, and you say I'm taking over, it's me. Nothing we can negotiate with you. All right. We uh, just need to put you in. Okay. Simple. No matter what ban. Yeah. After the break, we're going to deal with this with the, with, the, with the rest of the panel about what can, we, what, what can we do to create a new sense right, of law, lawfulness. Because I think really we're in an era of lawlessness. Otherwise, we we touch our blonde. Lawlessness? No. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Minister Becky Taylor, Minister of Public Works, of course, my guest here tonight in the, in the midst of some 150 stakeholders here from across the province who are going to weigh in uh, throughout the dialogue, the frank dialogue on the construction mafia. Coming to you live from capital Zimbabwe. Stay tuned. It's part of truth. We're coming to you tonight from <coughs> the frank dialogue on construction mafia taking place here at the capital Zimbabwe uh, out in KwaZulu Natal. And we're going to be having a panel discussion. But before that, let me just please stand. Uh, just just, just uh, from respond to what the minister was saying in terms of the construction mafia. Because I want, to, before I get to the panel, to say, let's just deal with the issue that the construction mafia exists. He's saying it exists. You earlier on said, no, it doesn't exist. It's just a label. Quickly. No, thanks, JJ. I mm. think it lets me uh, 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 reassert my, my, our words. Mm. We said we are not the construction mafia. Yeah. Uh, so whether it exists or it does not, but it is not us. Yeah. Yes. But you think it exists? Because I think that's important, because if it doesn't exist, then we can't solve for it. If it exists, we need to say, how do we deal away with it? Yes. Um, now, um, uh, uh, what, what we also said is that we, we, we agree uh, that there are criminal elements that have emerged, uh, people who go to sites and, and don't want to work and extort money. Yes, we agree, but that's not us. And we are saying we encourage government intervention, and we've been looking for them, and we are prepared with government in resolving those challenges. But whether it's mafias or not mafias, we cannot say, but it's not us. Yeah. Quickly, role of business, what you what do you think business should be doing to resolve this issue? Yes, I think uh, what we should be doing, small business and big business uh, should, should work together in the form of a peace against crime. But what is happening is just big businesses, small business, or us as people or, or enemies. So for, for, for as long as there's no unity between small and big, black and white, we will have these elements. But the, the, the solution is unity and working together because some of us, uh, we, we, we are from the townships, we know these elements, and so we were prepared to you know, deploy our skills, expertise, our knowledge in working with government, but with big business together. Thank you very much. I'll come back to you now. So let me come to you. Uh, just, just crack it for us in terms of just the, the, the built environment and whether or not right, there are systems in place right, 
put in place by the, by the uh, uh, CIDB, for example, right? To be able, uh, you know, in a sense, to create a framework that would avoid, you know, the kind of violence that the minister was talking about earlier. Yes, thanks, JJ. Uh, to the, to, to your viewers. JJ, the simple, I think the, the matter has been addressed to BF, to be honest with ourselves. I think the minister has really identified that there is a criminal element and we just need to all accept it. Mm. <coughs> that, as said, we can't deal with. However, on those that want to engage and seeking solutions um, around uh, this uh, issue, that we can engage it. I think BBF, we have engaged, they've met us before. Yeah. And, uh, and what we can do is to find those solutions and look at the procurement system and see how we yeah. can develop our contractors. Part of our mandate is to focus on the transformation and the D in, in CIDB. So mm. the development uh, option is there. We are looking at it. Of course, there are other fights behind the scenes because we have a Yeah, super what is this D in, 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 in CIDB? Yes, that development. Constant, Development, it's development. Is, yes, yeah. which is the development of our contractor. So that is in place, and that we are is that in place? Is that not why we are having this problem? Let that in fact the let communities me, let, feel let, that there's no development let enough. Me, let me further elaborate. Now, yeah. where we are trapped, J, uh, 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 Prof, yeah. with 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 uh, CIDB, hmm. we do not own the procurement system yeah. that sits elsewhere with Treasury, and that's a very difficult department to crack. To be honest with you. We have a procurement bill now that is flying around mm. that has no input from CITP, yet mm. it's going to affect the contractors. And then we're going to sit here, people arguing about transformation and the development, and then some other methods are used yeah. to try and fulfill this development aspect. And that's where we're trapped. So if we could actually work better with the Treasury, <coughs> say, listen, give us a procurement system that CITP can take a lead on, things, these problems would be solved. I can tell you now, our stakeholders, we are aligned and the minister would tell you, we are aligned in terms of what we want to see yeah. and what we want to see done. Is, is this other agenda, let's say, of your board, that the resisting of construction mafia or not, has it been on your agenda? And what has been your program, in summary, to yes, deal with it? Yes, it is on the agenda. But of course, there are the mafia, which is I would regard as the criminal elements. Unfortunately, we don't have those resources to deal with that. We rely on subs to assist us on that. But however, in terms of social facilitation, yeah. which would help us reduce the problem yeah. that we are engaged with, we've got a program now with IDT yeah. where we are trying to create a framework of, for social facilitation, which I think BBF has also alluded to. So those are the kind of solutions that we can come up. Yeah. The criminal elements and the guns, unfortunately, we can't deal with. All right. And of course, dealing with the procurement system. We need to deal with the procurement system. You can't procure a pen and procure a building in the same way. That, as CIDB, we need to bring it back to CIDB so that we can attend to these problems yeah. and become the custodian of the procurement and make those interventions as CIDB. It can't be sitting elsewhere. All right. Uh, it would be curious to hear from the, the audience when we come to them whether or not they feel that your intervention is useful from a point of view of just obviating the need for them to always feel that they have to impose themselves on this project. Let's go to business now, to Auspalis. If you can just tell us then, in terms of the, what, what, what business forums right, are, are talking about. Earlier on, we were talking about whether or not there's a resistance, right, uh, by particularly white big business, right, on whether this thing of 30% and what have you. And, and maybe that's what generates resentment. But you may have a different view. What is your view about about how this happens and also what is your own challenge to government about how to intervene thank you very much uh, jj and uh, good evening to your viewers at home um from the durban chamber point of view um of course we represent big business and mm. we also represent uh, small medium enterprises as well mm. um as well as the informal sector so we've got a couple of uh, businesses based in the township so there is really a historical challenge where big business has not been supporting traditional black businesses mm. and giving them an opportunity um, of a slice of the cake. Mm. Uh, we've been having various discussions with our members, especially big businesses, to say, how can we come up with programs to bring in um, the smaller businesses, especially from the townships and rural areas, to give them opportunities? So there's various ESD programs that a lot of business, big businesses have actually put together. Um, to introduce uh, the SMMEs from the townships and rural areas to start getting access to the possible opportunities that they can get from the big businesses. But what do what what do you want government to do better? Have you have you engaged with them 
Do you think that from what the Minister of Police was saying, from what the Minister of Public Works was saying, there's enough there, right, to arrest this issue? Absolutely not. So um, I, I think when the Minister walked in, I showed him a letter that we as the Devon Chamber wrote to him. Um, and he in reply? No, he didn't. <laughs> 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 but, well, there was a reply from SAPS where we ended up sitting with the lawyer the guy who's responsible for legal at SAPS. So yeah. what our issue, what we were saying is, especially when it comes to the violence uh, mm. at the sites of, 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 of businesses, we're saying there's three things, there's three laws that we had wanted um, the minister to look at and change. The first one is the Firearms, Firearms Act, mm. where we were saying for pro protectional services, um, they need to look at a law prohibiting if I'm walking around with my bodyguard, that my bodyguard has got a big rifle showing, yeah. and this is my protector, my protector, my my, pro my this protection. Is yeah. This is my protection. So the government needs to review that and 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 change the law. So the pro pro the, the the protectional services need to hide their guns appropriately and not be displaying them because when they go to sites, it looks like it's an intimidation. That's the first one. Yeah. The second one, I mean. The, the, the issue hadn't even really spread across the country that yeah. like it has right now, where we were saying we would like to see um, this issue addressed in a way where it, with urgency, like a GBV. For example, yeah. when you look at GBV, um, there's a lot of attention and focus that have actually been given onto this. We needed to arrest this thing as early as possible before we get the kind of mafia that the, the, that the minister is getting. So we really want to see government taking this really, really serious and ensure that it gets prevented. The third one, um, in terms of policy, we're saying we would like to see if somebody comes to a site with intimidation tactics, we need to get those people to allow the police to arrest them immediately. And yeah. we want the bank accounts of those people frozen. Yeah. And we need SARS. Is this not already opinion? all in the law? All you are telling us now? Well, not according to what, uh, you know, the, the, the discussions we've had with SEPS is in terms of the specific uh, crime of construction mafia. So I'll let the minister actually answer to, yeah. see, to hear if it has changed. Because like I said, we had written this last year. And we also had other stakeholders that even uh, presented it to various forums, such yeah. as even the ANC National Policy a conference that took place yesterday, we also submitted that. So I'm hoping that uh, the minister maybe can give us a response All right. today. We'll, come, we'll come to the minister, we'll give the minister a, a, a chance there. But let me just hear in terms of, from a civil society point of view, you know, earlier on you accused government of not caring and just wanting to clamp down, etc. But obviously, given the general crime statistics, and the minister was saying, oh, let's not talk general, but, but we have to talk in the context of a broad, uh, 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 you know, war, you know, against the, the public by, by criminals, right? And in that context, we are saying they are, claiming, they, they, are, they are clamping down and they are not the caring government and what have you. Surely they need to clamp down, isn't it? So I think, firstly, my appeal would be to the minister to say, I, I want to appeal to the minister's conscience to say, at the age of 71, would you gladly resign? Because mm. where things are going in this country, they're not going in the right direction. Mm. We live in a country where the cash in transit heist report says that every day there is a cash in transit heist in this country. Mm. It takes 14 months to plan a cash in transit heist. You need explosives. So there are factories that are generating explosives. Guns are fired. Those bullets, the guns are not known about, the bullets are not known about. Every single day, a cash in transit heist. Mm. Minister, my words to you would say, can you resign? please, and give the opportunity to younger people that have got solutions to be able to implement. So you, you, now, you don't have confidence in him at the moment? Look, I think there comes a time when, when, when policies say that at the age of 65, take your pension, companies understand that that's the limit that an adult person can take. And I think to a certain extent, it might also be unfair on him to put him at the age of 71 and expect him to understand these complex matters. The matter we're discussing tonight of construction mafia, yeah. it's a very complex matter. It involves small Are business. Are you saying what you said earlier, you don't buy? That the no. fact that, that, first of all, the construction mafia exists. Secondly, they as a the police are going to clamp down in terms of uh, making sure that people who 
arrive with guns and what like he gave an example are going to be arrested because i i, I you know I, you know it, it, it's it's nice to talk about general thing of that the whole government somebody can say them was, was all go but you know to tonight was saying what are the solutions tonight right with what we've got because they're in power until april next year Definitely. and he's <laughs> unlikely to resign okay no yeah. problem <laughs> we'll leave that one but but what i want to get to is the, the matter we're discussing tonight is a fundamentally important matter. Yeah. And there's nothing new under the sun, the Bible tells us, which clearly informs us that the issues we're facing today are issues that have been faced by many other countries that have solved them very quickly. We're now in democracy 30 years. We are still discussing black people going to beg for jobs in their own localities to be able to earn a living. How can we still be discussing that after 30 years of democracy? Yeah. That means that the same democracy we fought for, we were fighting it for outsiders to come and take jobs in a country of people that were deprived for many years. Yeah. All right. The matter stems from small business all the way up to government. There's no coordinated approach in government. Every minister is doing what they think is right without coordination of understanding how do we empower the small business in the community to become a leader in construction? How do we bring in enterprise? How how do we bring in all departments to ensure that the businesses in the locality can become big business and not just always call businesses from outside to come and build schools, but actually develop people in those communities that have built schools, that build industries, and we get to develop our own people. The government is not understanding the problem. And when you don't understand something, it's quick to say it's a mafia. Mm, 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 mm. All right. I think it's a, it's a bit of a mouthful. And I'm, I, I know that the minister on, on response on, on, on take the minute that I've got before I go to a break, right? So I'm going to uh, 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 go to the break. After the break, we'll, we'll give the minister to respond to that and then get the panel to get the second bite before I go into the audience now to, cut, to, to try and get more panelists in and then to debate the matters. We are at Zim, uh, the capital Zimbali tonight. Coming to you live from the Frank Dialogue or the Construction Mafia. Part two is coming to you uh, here in KwaZulu Natal. After the break, Minister uh, uh, Tele will pick up that debate and then we'll also get some more views from the floor. Stay tuned. It's part two truth. We are back uh, here at, at the capital, Zimbali, at the Frank Dialogue on the Construction Mafia. Um, and the, uh, the discussion is getting heated. You stay tuned. Of course, you can tweet us at ENCA, at JJ Davani, at Power to Truth, if you want to contribute to that uh, particular debate. Minister, let me come straight to you uh, to respond. You've heard what has been said. You've been asked to resign. Uh, people are saying that they wrote to you, uh, uh, you know, about stuff that uh, can be done on these things. Just weigh in a bit for me. I refuse. You refuse to resign? I refuse. I, no, I refuse to listen to demagogues here who do not know where they are. Mm. You see, you called us to come here to resolve the problems. Solutions. And this poet, he thinks of elections next year. Mm. We need to resolve these problems here. And then I'll spend my time and my energy dealing with those matters, not dealing with demagogues. Mm. Yes, indeed. The, the issue was raised. Yes, I have not been part of the meeting, but the provincial commissioner of this, of this province has been really working with the business here. I think somewhere I did raise the issue that he has been, but not only them, even on the central matters and all that, I'm briefed and all that. It does not mean that if I didn't come from Uxolobola, Aglojoliwe, so we've sent Abakung, Umkung, and Mtumelela, who provincial commissioner who's got all the decision to take and all the powers to take decisions to deal with these matters, criminal and all that. So maybe personally, I'm not there, but on the matters, I've been dealing with the matters. But I still promise that uh, we will meet. But things that you tell me are things that I will tell the provincial commissioner anyway to activate and do on those. JJ, we have a problem here. Mm. Problem of resignation and all that. Because those are elections and all those kind of things. So I'm not going to spend my time talking to people that are crying in the wrong funeral. 
The issue here has been raised by the leadership of BBF. We need to separate between criminality, which themselves do not deny that is there, JJ, and the genuine business people that are supposed to do the work and be given the opportunities. Mm. We need to separate on those two things. But how do we deal with this, all of us? Is them distancing themselves from those people because they know them? As they sit here, I repeat, they can't touch their names, they're untouchable. When you go to north of Deben, when you go to south of Deben, when you go to Guamakuta, the, the, the following and all that, there are names yourselves you know there. People that go to the, to the construction site, they come with 12 body guard led by somebody that they know and say from now on, this is not your business. You go home. We call the police. We have arrested that. I've said to you, JJ, there are people who come in your business. They don't chase you. They give you the new speed, uh, the, 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 the speed, speed sports, whatever. Where you, speed you, point. Speed point. Yeah. And on those speed points, that money goes to their accounts, not you. You continue to work. Mm. But whoever pays is paid for you when you are not there. You are, you, you are not going to t tell me that that is not the mafia. They don't end there. After that, if you build any building, they come, they tell you that it's after this, it's us, it's our management that is running this. So it's a question of those people that... They are criminals hiding, most of them, in this industry. It doesn't mean that there are things that are not, are not wrong that have happened there. I, I did talk about the charity station where a, a person who got the right to build there, you bring everybody, including the foreshell, as if there is no shovel that is sold in the store there. You can't buy even that thing. You come with it. Indeed, those people, they, they, they do a lot of, of, of trouble and they cause people there to be aggrieved. But if people are aggrieved, what do they do? We need to talk as they have spoken with the Sunrise 30 billion that they talk about. They yeah. did not take the guns, as they say here, and go there. Because once you take the guns, the responsibility of those 71 old men is to send the younger <laughs> ones. Doesn't go there himself is to send the younger ones <laughs> so that they arrest. And indeed, 12 armed of them were arrested them. We put them there for the whole weekend. Yeah. We took their You feel after. you are winning the war. Just yeah. give me a simple answer because the people at home may not be, have benefit of the whole evening. But I just want to know, J do J you feel you are winning that war? It's not me who is saying so. Are the people that are sitting here that they can see the light at the end of the tunnel? They talk about the 30 billion that they did not fight for using guns. They sat down and that is a progress. Where does it do that progress? Whoever that gets out of that progress, I'm telling you, and that's what we get paid for. No matter no matter we get paid to make sure that we enforce the law, and we are. And to come here and give statistics that do not exist, there is no cash in, there is no cash house in every day here, JJ. Mm. We have arrested 75 of those people, mm. and they have engaged us on the field as they shoot us. 62 of them, <laughs> they are on the dust, starting with 19 of them, four of Kwamashu, two last week, or Munya Simlandela, or to Blipoi Salapa, Simlandela last week, and renting to 65,000. <laughs> Some London. So, yeah, 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 arrest people that break the law, but let's open the space yeah. for the genuine people that want to make business. Yeah. And let's work with those people. But they must also work with us to take out criminality within their environment. All right. Let's go to Minister Zigalala, who's still joining us uh, virtually. Minister, please weigh in. There is a, there is a, a, a big issue, that's a thread that's running through, that there seems to be economic deprivation, right? And uh, my, my question still remains whether or not we believe that we have an, e a, a, an adequate 
economic inclusion plan that would obviate this problem in 10, in 20 years' time? Minister? No, I think before I get into that question, may I deal with the fact you invited us as government, not a political party. It is wrong of you to place in the panic someone who represents another political party. If you wanted that, you should have invited us as the ANC. We will come and participate. We will not allow some people arouse, arise SA to come and stand on platforms that are not political. I would argue with a businessman, I would argue scientific analysis with an academia, and that's why I respected the program pursued by you on the basis that it was non-partisan. Dangata is a representative of a political party. He himself has displayed his ignorance of how government works. And I would take an issue with you as a host for that reason. I believe we should be professional enough. I'm so I have I'm so from different points of views with number of people in your progress. But I cannot be I cannot allow a situation where a naive politician, Uma Figizon, is given a platform that he doesn't deserve. You should have invited the IFP, the DA, and all other people to participate. We would have been there, participate as the ANC. Now, I think that is my first point of departure around grandstanding of people who are naive and ill-informed. He talks us and he talks today and say Africans are begging. We can narrate the project we have done to empower Africans. He cannot connect to those because he is campaigning at the expense of the invitation to us to come to deal with factual issues. I must engage with you and your audience on the basis of the entrepreneurs who are deprived, on the basis of the death and chamber of commerce who are, in, who are affected. But I cannot come here and engage with someone who is grandstanding because he represents a political party. Unless you will tell me he represents a particular institution, he is a professor and he was invited to here as a professor. And I wanted to take an issue with that. It is unprofessionalism. And I don't believe that we could allow to be subjected to such a thing. If you want a political argument, a political debate, I will be available even at night or at, in the morning. But not to invite someone who does not belong to this panel to come and come and grandstand on cheap ideas. Now, having said that, let me be firm. If you will go to CIPP, you will see Africans that most of your grade eight, seven are blacks going down. And why is that? It is because the ANC-led government from 1994 has implemented dedicated programs that seek to empower Africans to become in the industry. I've got names of Africans. Your guest might not be familiar with that because And don't allow us to come and debate with idiots. We deserve to respect each other. Let's debate on facts. There are a number of African people who own great nine companies. They don't go back in. But they themselves, because they are big, need, whether white or small, need to support small businesses. I have said the principle of 80% localization must be clearly defined. Is it a district? Is it a province or national? Now, we have principles and policies we have put in place to ensure that we deal with these issues. We have now post the, the judgment that ruled the regulations of April 1, 2017. We have now started what is called public procurement bill. We seek to ensure that we are able to localize, we are able to have set aside. This is coordinated. There is what is called economic cluster in government, which your panelists seem to be ignorant of, which coordinate all economic policies, including 
the triple PEE, the, including the issue of the public procurement bill that is being processed. I will not, I will never agree that we must come here and be subjected to just a short ambush of someone who's ill-informed that cannot relate with any piece of legislation. All right, Whatever Minister. we act, you must be relating to the pieces yeah. of legislation and policies that govern the country. Yeah, Minister, I, I appreciate you flattening whatever argument he has, but in this in this audience here, there are political parties, there's DA, people represented, Action SA, EFF, and so on. This is an open forum. Oh, correctly so, correctly uh, so. Sorry, yes, yeah, sorry, wait, so, wait, Minister. Uh, correctly so, JJ. Yes, wait, wait, Minister, I'm JJ, saying you are free, you. free to disagree no, with wait, him, wait, wait, wait. but not, everybody not, here no, is no, welcome. I'm not going to allow that. He is not... If he is a panelist, it means he represents someone. There are leaders I've seen there of DA, they are seated as parties. Yes, Minister, Minister, leaders Minister, Minister, let's, let's calm the temperatures. We are going to yeah. support that because it is wrong for someone to come and transcend on ill-informed, but also yeah. selectively. It's wrong to select people and we are not going to be subjected to that. Yeah. Minister, I think it's important to clarify the ANC was invited, they declined. Okay, it's not my fault. The ANC was invited, they declined. Okay, Other political you. parties are here. They are going to participate. It's a frank, open dialogue for everyone. And thank you for dealing with this no, argument. You are wrong, JJ. Okay, Minister, let's no, not let's wrong. let's not let's not uh, argue. No, 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 further. no, no, no. I take your no, point. You are very, very wrong. Yeah, I you take are your point. Very wrong. You need to apologize on that. You no, need, no, no, no. The, a, the ANC was invited money, and they you. declined, right? The ANC you know, was invited here. The chairperson of the ANC was invited to be here and to be on the panel, and he declined. But let's take a break now, Minister. Yes, I hear your argument. You, you can pick it up after the break. I'll give you another chance uh, to debate. No, you, you can. Are totally you, wrong. Okay, okay, Minister. Let's agree to disagree. Let's agree to disagree on that. Let's take a break. After the break, we carry on with a heated discussion here on the frank dialogue on the construction mafia. Let's take a break now. It's quite heated out here at the uh, capital Zimbali at the frank dialogue on the construction mafia with a, a, a range of stakeholders here from all walks of life to debate thoroughly the issues that are facing the country. Sir. Uh, Sikosi Pikumalo, chairperson of all the business forums that are here. All of them? Yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 Minister Pekitele, one, the PPF is not a construction mafia. That is clear. Two, maybe the government should have a meeting with us and use us yeah. so that there is no construction mafia because they believe there is construction mafia. Yeah. So they must sit with us, arrange with us, use us as a tool yeah. so that there is no construction mafia. Okay. We as the PPF are willing to sit with them. It's just that it's a pity that they go to meet their briefings without consulting with us, and they call us a uh, construction mafia. Yeah. Uh, you've, you've never engaged with them on no, this issue? No, no, no. Not at all? Not in a formal meeting? No, never. May, maybe may, uh, in those, I see here in the city, Zifang Amvonye. Because China, so, so, so my business. As the PPF, we have the MOU, no can't go to win. We have the MOA, no can go to So, China, we are, we are delivering. Usandra sits with us. So we are delivering, and we are business people. CITP, uh, but the problem is, CITP yeah. is destroying all these small businesses. Tell me how. Because when you don't work for a year, yeah. they will take you to a lower grade, which is not fair. Because they, oh, isn't it because they are looking at the quality? Yeah. Because if you haven't worked for a year, it, it, you're going to collapse buildings. It, it is very, very hard to go back to that grade. Yeah. There are red tapes. These people are killing us. CITP is killing people. How else should they make sure that they maintain the standard? Let's say if you haven't worked for a year, shouldn't you sort of have a refresh of some kind? Let's say you, you, you were grade 3 GP, yeah. and then you don't work for a year. When you go to check and refresh, you are 2 GP. And for you to get back there, you must earn at least 600,000. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. And the, the Deppen Chamber, yeah. I can never relate to Deppen Chamber as PPF. Yeah. Because they have resources, they have funding. We don't have that. 
If they are for empowerment, why don't they call BBF and sit with BBF and say, guys... You've never sat with a business chamber? We, 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 they sit with individuals, not as a BP, BPF as a structure. My so God. we want that meeting, them sitting with us as the structure and the founding members of the BBF. All right. I'm sure, we can, we I'm sure they can the commit. They can commit. No, uh, we, we demand, we demand the Surely that's a, that's a straightforward one. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Comment. That is really an unfair and false statement. Abo Wanda, Abo Robert, uh, and Omelusi, I engage with them as the BBF. And when mm. there's opportunities yeah. that are out there available, we always call them whether it's as a structure. As a structure. Yeah. So I don't know what the chairperson is talking about. Thank you very much. All right. Okay. Looks like there, there's a disagreement there, sir. You introduce yourself. Andre Kipela. Mm. KZN Growth Coalition. We coordinate uh, big business with various chambers throughout the province. Okay, so if, if you met with the BBF? Not BBF, but, uh, but some of the members some over of the years. Members. Okay. Remember, it started about 2016. Mm. Uh, those forums at that time were quite aggressive, and many mm. of them, and they were just organizing themselves. But as I've mentioned before, since uh, Commissioner Mkwanazi arrived in KZN, we have a full cooperation with him. And it would be good if in his presence, Chamber of Commerce, KZN, Growth Coalition, NEFCOC, with whom we work very closely yeah. every, everywhere, and they represent small business, we will meet with any other chamber yeah. to come up with a program of how to engage. Yeah. We had What's your understanding of the construction mafia? I mean, do you think there is a particular group of people who are so-called in this province? Look. The, as the minister has articulated, mm. the mafias exist, not only construction mafias, there's yeah. transportation mafia and many other uh, mafias. Yeah. They are organized, they are guys that sit in very expensive hotels or villas, mm. often not even in South Africa. Mm. Mm. They actually penetrated, they in cahoots with certain politicians, they in cahoots with certain businesses, and they operate and we have to fight it. It's an international now you know, occurrence, not only here. Yeah. And uh, I can see Sishle Zikalala, uh, our ex-premier, got hot under his collar. Yes. Yeah. But credit must be given to him, because yeah. after the insurrections in 2021, yeah. he and Kwanazi sat with business, and we came up with a plan, yeah. a rapid response system, and actually the and is that, starts, is that still in place after, after he, he vacated that office or, or not, in your view? It's in place and it's working. Graham O'Connor, we've raised 26 million rand. We bought equipment for SEPs, yeah. for monitoring and uh, key points like the ports and, and airports and so on and so forth. Yeah. So it's working. And we, we will sit down with any other forum, you know, if their intentions are good and actually taking the economy forward. Because we can't pretend and just, yeah. you know, uh, cite uh, uh, white or Indian or black business separate. Yeah. We're all in it together. We're all affected. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm going to go uh, around quickly, just quickly, before I go to, to, to that table there with Mayor Papas. Just, just tell me about, the, the, just, just a, a sense of, do you feel that uh, the, the issue of construction mafia is being labeled particularly to, to business forums, black business forums here or not? Because they, on, on two occasions you have, you, you've had to clarify, you say, we are not the construction mafia. Just, just explain that to me, just put it in context for our viewers. Uh, thanks, JJ. I think there are many uh, publication articles written um, under the team construction mafia, some from international organizations that say they are from the security status of universities. So whenever they speak about construction mafia, yeah. they bring BPF name, yeah. and then they even uh, say it's youth in action. Who says that? So we, we are not sure, uh, but I think uh, wh where we, 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 we are directing to it is government, because government, of course, are responsible to create a conscious environment you know, so we are saying, government, please create this environment for us, business forum, so that we 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 we, we are regularized, we are, we are also recognized. So that whenever there is a mention of a mafia, people can distinguish this. It is not us, business forum. It can be any other mafia, 
for all we, 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 we care. Yes. Thank you very much, my brother. Okay, let me just come over here to Mayor Papas. Mayor, thank you for joining us again tonight. Your view about this whole construction mafia thing, you're going to be dealing with it. I mean, if, especially if you're intending to, to be part of the relationship of the province in the future, but currently, even now, as mayor of your own particular municipality. So good evening to, to everyone and to the panelists uh, here present. Firstly, I must take exception with the way that uh, Minister Zigalala responded to a young person airing his views in a country where young people are excluded. Most of the people who are being accused of being mafia here today are young people who are trying to find space in an economy that has excluded them. And when a minister responds like that, it shows insensitivity towards the actual discussion that we're supposed to be having here today. We have a failed state. The state is supposed to be a facilitator of social, economic, and political progress. We're supposed to support, we're supposed to find the gaps where they exist and try to, to assist. That has not happened. The discussion that we're having here today is reactionary. It is a reactionary discussion to failed policies that have led to economic exclusion, first of, first of all, unemployment. Is and it reactionary or reactive? It is reactionary. It is reactionary to the state that we find ourselves in. If we didn't have such high, such high unemployment, mm. if we didn't have a uh, majority black people excluded from the economy, we wouldn't be having this discussion. There was an article not so long ago that spoke about the privatization of South Africa because the state has failed, the private sector has taken things into their own hands. Mm. What you see among small business owners is taking things into their own hand because the policies of the state have failed to uplift them, have failed to find a space for them in our economy. The fact that the minister was speaking about uh, legislation and policies, we have those policies. Yeah. What he needs to admit then is that the state's policies currently have failed, yeah. including the preferential procurement, including triple B, double E, they have failed because the same people get, keep getting uh, assisted, whereas small people are not finding expression within the supply chain systems of government, but also in within the broader developmental perspective of our country. Can you, can you tell me, in terms of the, 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 this so-called failed police, I mean, that, that are, that are, that's across. You saying that uh, where the DA governs, it governs well, and what have you. In the Western Cape, can you give me a, a case study of where the DA has done it differently, right, in terms of that kind of economic opportunity? Because just last week, your mayor in Cape Town was saying that there's construction mafia in Cape Town. You know, it was all over the show. In fact, he fired, uh, uh, you know, one of his uh, M uh, MMCs in the construction area in particular, precisely because of that mafia. Your, your view there? So absolutely. The, the, the word mafia, I think we're getting, we're getting stuck on that. The word mafia means organized crime. Mm. Uh, and organized crime exists in South Africa, whether it's gang, whether it's transport. Someone mentioned transport and within the construction industry, industry yeah. as well. That is people who extort uh, the private sector or government to get their own way. Yeah. But we must separate that from legitimate people who are trying to grow within the economy. Yeah. Now, let me take the city of Cape Town, for example. Mm. In coming into power in the city of Cape Town, and I think it was uh, Helen Zilla at that time, who was the first, yeah. first mayor, did away with the type of preferential procurement that we see in other parts of the country. Because what that was doing, the same people were getting the same jobs and getting the same contracts to the exclusion of those who are up and coming. As soon as you get rid of that, you give the, the, the small business an opportunity to participate. And then you have to yeah. make sure that the mechanisms are in place to support those businesses. Yeah. Whether it is skills development. Let's, let's talk about disadvantage. Yeah. What is disadvantage as a whole? It's the lack of access to capital. It's the lack of access to network. It's the lack of access to, yeah. to skills. If we can sort all those things out and take away the disadvantage by different interventions, yeah then we create an equal platform. But right. we have to do more than create that equal Quickly, platform. Quickly, do you think that Minister Taylor is on top of his situation? She's, he's described here what they are doing to try and you know, mitigate against this thing and put th systems in place. Your own assessment, being in this province? No, I don't. I don't think that the minister is doing, doing enough. But to be fair to the minister as well, yeah. the minister is dealing with the end product. Yeah. The minister is dealing with the end product, and that, as I said, is reactionary. What we should be doing is we're dealing with the economic part and the policy part of what we're talking about here tonight, and that is people being unable to participate in an economic system because of various different things. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Let's, let's get some more views. Anybody here? Right. Come introduce yourself. Uh, thank you. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, thanks, JJ. Yeah, JJ, I think firstly, let's, let's be honest. 
we need to separate uh, criminality yeah. and those individuals who are really disparate yeah. to be given opportunities. Mm. But also, let's go back what really happened in 2016. Mm. I think the gentleman there spoke about 2016. Mm. I was part of executive committee in 2016 in Tewin. That's where mafia things started. Now, there was a political fight yeah. between two factions. In the, in the, in the ruling party? In or ruling we party. are taking factions where? In the ruling party, JJ. Yeah. What happened there is, there were times where the MKVA yeah. came to the boardroom while we were on ESCO, mm. and they held us to ransom as ESCO members. Serious. And demanded a share, right? Then the faction, certain faction at that time, succumbed to that pledge to allocate certain portion to MKVA. Yeah. Then what happened? The other faction started to rally all those small business people who were fighting for opportunity, honestly so. But then politically, they were organized yeah. to come and fight the other faction. When they held a student summit City Hall, they said to us, I was there in that meeting, yeah. James Newman was chairing a meeting. They said, you have done this to MKVA, do it to us then. Yeah. Then allocate this money to us. Then they demanded to get 30% without doing anything. Mm. And mm. You they know, were not saying 30% of the work that was being dished out. They were saying 30% of the profit without work. Without work. And I remember the project where they were given money. And unfortunately, they were even fighting with black people in business. Yeah. Where you'll find that there's construction or those who are cleaning uh, roads. Uh, and they will fight black people who are already in business. Yeah. And then I, I must give also commend who says I'm Tony, who was still a, a premier. Yeah. He was the only leader in government who was able to speak boldly and say, this is criminality, and it must be dealt as criminality. Yeah. But in the ANC, in, in the Tewin, yeah. they were busy dealing, dealing with this issue. So what, 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 what is happening now? What's your own assessment right now of the situation? Do you think it's under control? Do you think that if it's not under control, what quickly should be the solutions? Let's get to that point now. Look, I don't think it's under control, but the solution is we must have really an inclusive empowerment uh, uh, policy where we really ensure that those who are really willing to participate in our economy, because we can't be uh, uh, apologetic about this. Through the matter is the majority of black people are still finding themselves outside the mainstream economy. That's a reality. Yeah. Now we need policies that seek to empower black people, yeah. and we can't run away from that fact. Yeah. But those who are running businesses, who are willing to participate in the economy, let's support them, let government make sure that the enabling environment is yeah. there to I mean, support them. And, and, and the gentleman who spoke there, you say, during his turn as premier, they put in the, into place a framework that, if implemented, should be part of a solution. Surely, you have to give it to him. There's a problem, JJ, that we've got individual's policies because earlier you, you had Mr. Taylor saying, when he was a minister, this is what happened. Then when he left, it fell apart. Why is government? Why you have a minister who come and implement their own policies? What about government policies? So right now, uh, also I can commend uh, Mr. Zigalala because yeah. when he was a premier, yeah. he was also showing some interest in terms of radical empowerment yes. of black people. And we saw that yeah. as a province, yeah. but then he's no more there. It's falling apart. So the problem- Is it is, falling apart? It is falling apart. All right, let's leave it there. Okay, no, 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 no. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, 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 please come, come here because the, there's a bit of less. I'll give you a chance, come, stand up. Okay, all right. Um, um, evening, JJ, mm. and um, the ministers. Yeah. Right, my one, mm. um, last week, I mean, uh, last month, mm. the president was here in the province. Yes. Um, and uh, there was a stake, uh, I mean, a stakeholder engagement. Yeah. And the president, um, when BPF wanted uh, to meet up with him, yes. Um, he said uh, he will um, deal with us. Yeah. And he said that... Deal with you, mean meet with you. Deal with us. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> per, uh, fortunately, we've got a minister today <laughs> who will then clarify what was being said yeah. by the head of state <laughs> when he said he will deal with us. That's the first one. And he said there is already a unit in the police to deal with us. Yeah. Um, but fortunately, we're seeing uh, a kind of an engagement 
for the first time now that we uh, we are having a direction yeah. because the minister tried to say that uh, the criminals because we are not criminals yeah. that must be uh, made very clear yeah. we are not criminals and i see this debate deviating uh, from the issue at hand yeah. in which way okay uh, now the issue is that mm. when people want to participate yeah. in the mainstream of the economy yeah. some of them are being labeled uh, yeah. criminals yeah. and mafia, uh, and mafia. Uh, jj I, I won't be apologetic let me make this very clear yeah. If there is uh, an initiative made, like we, we made uh, an example with Sandra, yeah. that uh, BPF has assisted in making sure that many people even had uh, opportunities yeah. in participating in that project. Yes. yes. So we are not a mafia, that must be made very clear, yeah. but we are also not apologetic for yeah. wanting to benefit from this economy of this country. We are not stepchilds of this country. Yeah. That must be made very clear. And the privilege afforded to a people of color, whites, yeah. to be very clear, Thank you, must Mabie. be afforded to yeah. us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come. Hi, JJ. Briefly, yes. Briefly this is Selby Kumet from Way of Brand. Maybe what I can just say for now, maybe Babundosi can assist us in getting this person that is confusing everyone about this construction mafia. Because it seems as if this construction mafia individual is, is confusing the whole country. If I see here, I see also my business that wanted to participate. Yeah. Now, this is where the problem is. We need to redefine the triple P. Because triple P on the initial stage does not include small businesses. So let's move away from triple P. Let's put plus S in it. Mm -hmm. So we are saying a triple P from an initial stage must also include small businesses yeah. because now we are dealing with e e e e execution problem where we want to benefit from the space of execution. But on initial stage where something was planned three years ago and executed after three years, we are dealing with that. We got you, my Thank brother. You. We, got you. we got you quickly, briefly. Uh, 30 seconds. JJ, thanks very much. Firstly, I would like to say that uh, I'm not personally happy about how you're conducting this uh, dialogue. Okay. You allowed this dialogue to be racial. At first, people were talking about black, white, Indian. We're not here for that. Yeah. We are here to... Frank, if you, if you, every view is welcome. It is, Frank, but we are here to discuss the issue of the construction, construction mafia. Go ahead. What's your solution? Which, which I've been affected on, where I've yeah. lost a lot of money by people coming to my sites, yeah. stopping them and saying they want uh, pocket money. What is the solution? The solution is that we allow Mr. Begitele, the police minister, to yeah. make sure that this does not affect us. Okay. I like what the Business of Commerce Chamber said in regards to the fact that um, Firearms Act must make sure that these people don't carry rifles around because they intimidate us and we do not know what to do. So, so it's a law enforcement issue in your view, generally? That's correct, but we must give the minister credit because we have seen, uh, yeah, it has been reduced because we are working now on some sites and people are not coming as like how they used to come. Wonderful. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. All views welcome, guys. You must understand you can't all sing in like a choir. Uh, Eh, Ogami who peg a gum shonisha undos. Gia chapa, Uzi, U minister, Ukulumangana, my fact. Eh, Indotala, Akulumangayo, Uzi, a such a yasin Uputam lam shoy. Ah, your brother, your own, eh, own brother. O Sandra, you are bound to Bassananda, or what's hanging a laba fellow about gas, Bassananda, Amatex, Abasabella Labenga Zil. But Marum Saba Abam Sabayam Sand, and as was. Ang ang phone ugu se um u u u baba oshonpe oshonpe yenjengo 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 dos akuluminte nge kupagas kwaband even la la sel kona manje una banda basizil useza bando every day una yo futing kampani ama security e registered e sebenza e in open they are carrying guns they are carrying guns around we talk at what sunya bando guti ba yombula la basule ngo ba selgu amka. Okay, okay, yes. ma'am. So, actually, I look at the Vale, but I'm not going to be able to get the Vale. I'm not going to be able to get the Vale. I'm not going to be able to get the Vale. Okay, ma'am. 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 Okay, ma'am.
Thank you. Uh, you, you said you need solutions. Yeah, the solutions. Solutions, please, quickly. F firstly, implement the legislation as it is. Uh, let's listen. You have section 217 of the constitution dealing with procurement. Yeah. None of those is being implemented effectively, yeah. either being stopped by certain people who are progressive legislation fighters, whether yeah. it be legislation which was set aside yeah. purely because there was a lack of consultation that took place. And instead of government going back and doing the proper consultation, we are now rewriting the rules and saying that we must start from scratch. While we are doing that, who's suffering? The same individuals who are sitting in this but room. Other solutions don't motivate. Just give me just give me highlights quickly because I need to close. Second one, crime prevention, law enforcement, NPA, and judiciary must also be on par. Okay. Secondly, deal with the issue of capacity, saying that the people that are in this room, make them be able to participate effectively yeah. in the economy, and also deal with the professionals that are there, so that you do not, you do not have issues of roads which are not going to be completed, yeah. due to the staff or the professionals that have been there, not, yeah. not having enough capacity to provide the type of services that you are looking for. Okay, let's go back to the panel, but quickly, 30 seconds, your parting shot, please. Please pass the mic to him. Uh, uh, prof. Uh, I think uh, from, from our perspective... Okay. All right. Go ahead. No, I'm saying from our pers perspective, from a CID yes, perspective, uh, the, the problem is really a criminal one, and, and that's, that's, that's what Ma that's I... That's mainly a criminal. It's, it's yes. not a societal thing. Well, I'll allow the police to answer on that. <laughs> I'm, not a, uh, I'm not a social scientist person. But however, in terms of the stakeholders that are here, I'm surprised by some of the issues that they raised. We came yeah. to them, BBF. They didn't come to us yeah. because we wanted to be in touch with our stakeholders and what is happening. We came yeah. to them, we visited them to try and find what the solutions are. Yeah. And that's what we do. We are very in touch with our stakeholders. Yeah. Uh, I'm surprised also the gentleman is not aware that what he says is a problem, was actually put on hold way back. It is no longer a problem. Contractors yeah. are not directed. But does that, that doesn't are, uh, say, just say, just, just for way forward in terms of the dialogue now, yes, that you need then to have a fresh conversation, right? A yeah, close set, set up yes. where the, the, the yourselves, maybe the business forum, BBF, just a round table to say, where are we now? Because yes. it may be that they talk to different people in different organizations. Yes. Can we agree on that at I, least? I, I fully agree with yeah. you. All right. and, Auspales, and yes, thank you. Auspalesa, same with yourself. Would you agree with that, that despite what you know, he, the gentleman said here and what you had said, that there's a need, because we need to move forward, to have that close meeting, uh, that I'm happy to facilitate it you know, in a close meeting, not a, not a show, right? where you actually find solutions. Briefly, as your part? Absolutely. I think it actually, the conversation needs to be greater. Yeah. That way we really need to make sure that we've got, you know, the big businesses involved in this discussion. Yeah. Because it's very important that we start empowering, like I said, township, rural area, uh, small businesses to make sure that they also thrive so that the economy can grow. Okay. And secondly, I think in regards to this particular issue, Minister, Please just look at the laws. I know that you said uh, Commissioner Mkwanazi, he's absolutely brilliant uh, yeah. and we work very closely with him. Um, but he doesn't make the laws in terms of, you know, in the, the writing the laws that we requested. If you can do that for us, it will really, really All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. I think Your part in short, Daddy. Fundamentally, this problem costs the taxpayer 68 million in about a year's time. Billion, sorry. Billion. Mm. And if we're dealing with a problem that costs taxpayers 68 billion, and the room is saying, but there is no mafia, and we're hearing, but there is a mafia, I think we need to pay closer attention to it. Because yeah. there's 68 billion that's leaving the fiscus to deal with this issue. And I believe that this 68 billion can be used for greater causes like education. So my parting shot would be, we, we need to see government coordinating well in order to deal with this 68 billion right. loss that we're making as a government. All right. Fantastic. You. Minister Zigalala, your parting shot, please. I would want to start by welcoming the contributions by innate. There are two fundamental contributions that are critical here. The first one on law around, on regulations and law around firearms act, I think. Yes, It yes. is affecting the society, even in farm, in rural areas, in taxi industry or transport as a whole. And I think uh, the Deppen Chamber is correct. The second one is business enterprise for small businesses. But that comes as a package of what yes. I suggested earlier as five pillars of the social compact. The first is to ensure that we build a common understanding and perspective. 
the big business will not thrive at the expense of small business. Yes. The small business cannot emerge out of criminality. Build common understanding. Second, build the capacity of small businesses through enterprise development. Fast track localization through the public transformation, public procurement. All right. Thank you, Minister. Enforce the rule of law. Enforce yeah. the rule of law. Thank you, Minister. There is something that has not been challenged. Thank you. Thank you very much, Minister. Mayor, quick word. Uh, thank you, uh, JJ and Christine, to the panel. Uh, I think part of the thing that's must happen is to have, as the minister has pointed before, yeah. uh, a social compact to deal with this, with the, the, this thing. Yeah. And the subsequent to that, I think that's it, the PPF as well on its own. I think it can be able to cascade it down yeah. up until to the ground where we are in yeah. the local municipalities because yeah. even ourselves, we can see subjected either to project stoppages, yes. to, 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 to construction mafias, and we do not know whom we must we talk to at a regional or at a, at a local government Thank level. You, so I think if we can have that conversation yeah. as well Fantastic. as to who's responsible there, then we'll be able as well yeah. to avoid them under expenditure at a government level. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Minister, you've got the last word. In 30 seconds, how can you sum up tonight? It's growing very fast. It's growing very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Uh, JJ, the crux of the matter. Yes. You hear Omtuma Bekulum and all that. Yeah. Within themselves, they know, JJ, there are criminals. Yeah. That is using their good intentions as a caravan of criminality. They are quiet about it. The, yeah. uh, I was sitting with a young man, uh, in, in pirates, uh, pi pirates, uh, not chiefs, pi pirates, yeah. so he, he has been paying 200,000 200, every month to somebody there because he says, you got the work, so you must pay me because I did not get the work. Yeah. That guy has to drop that project. As we speak in that municipality, that project is not continuing. All right. Minister, can I, so, can I, pass, can I pause you a little bit? You will continue just now. Just need to say goodbye to the viewers at home. We're we'll still going to continue the dialogue for another 10 minutes quickly so, so you can wrap up your point properly. If you have been joining from home, you can see that the issues and debates about the construction mafia cannot end here tonight. There are solutions in the room. There are people in the room who are determined from all walks of life to make this, this thing to be solved so that you and I, ordinary people, can benefit from the spoils of this economy. But until we talk frankly again, may God bless you. I, I am really available, but that availability is all of us speaking frank on the matters yeah. we know. All right. don't, don't come and cover up because we're not covered. And other things, remember, we investigate. So, but we're not going to stop. Just the last one, JJ. Yes, please. I want to. Mayor Papas. This is not the youth that is doing these things. Don't, don't, don't abuse the youth. There are many old people that are going to the, to the site with guns and everything and, they, and take over. There will be young people, but most of them, they are old people, well-known, well-feared. Well the, the question of guns, we, we, are, we are trying to amend the, the firearms bill in South Africa. We suggested, JJ, yeah. that South Africans should not be armed if they are ordinary citizens. More than 6,000, uh, 60,000, especially from DA, uh, to say there are no ways people can armed. Indeed, there are many countries where people have been disarmed and there is no matter, less matter. One of them is Vietnam, which had the, the worst number of illegal firearms. But if we don't start somewhere, we must start somewhere. We have tried it, we have been pushed back and all that kind of stuff, but we'll continue to work on the matter. Right. Thank so you very much. Thank you very much. My brother? Wrap it up for us. Uh, JJ, uh, thank you um, uh, for being a very good host. 
Uh, thank you to our panelists, the two ministers. Let's listen, please. Uh, Minister Trele and, 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 and Minister Okuzen, uh, Sibog uh, and CITP. Uh, thank you to the participant uh, and all the contribution uh, that have been made. Uh, in summary, we welcome the meeting that will sit between us and the coalition. We will coordinate that with the chamber as well. Uh, and then the, the follow-up meeting uh, with CITP. But in closing, in closing, PPF, um, uh, 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 in, 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 in light of everything, the criminality, the mafia, it shouldn't get there. So we are saying as PPF, social facilitation should be a, a, a very big part of any project, enterprise development and CSI. So if we could have those three elements uh, 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 in all projects, mega or, or, or small, it will start to eliminate all this criminality uh, uh, itself, as well as the working relationship with and the law enforcement agencies. So BPF is a home for government and big business to work with SMMEs to open program opportunities while dealing with these elements. So that's who we are. We yeah. are your home. Please, all of us, let us work together to transform this economy. Thank you. Thank you. Let's give him a round of applause. Okay, Austolo from CIBD. Uh, please uh, wrap it up for us. Thank you, Prof. Um, um, on behalf of the CID board, may I acknowledge the Honorable Minister Zigalala and Minister Trele uh, Undos, uh, distinguished guests. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you as the CIDB, uh, which is a partner in this uh, evening engagement, um, for having been a part of this important dialogue today. And as we come to the close of this discussion of the challenges posed by the site disruptions and other challenges facing the industry, the uh, we want to express our gratitude for the openness and candor that has characterized our conversations this evening. The discussion has highlighted the complex and multifaceted challenge of site disruption, transformation and service delivery, impacting not only the construction industry, but also the broader community and economy of uh, South Africa. Today we've delved into the root causes, we've shared experiences and explored potential uh, solutions. And it is clear, ladies and gentlemen, that addressing this problem requires a collaborative effort from all stakeholders, including government bodies, law enforcement, construction companies, federations, and the community at large. Our commitment uh, extends beyond, beyond financial support as the CIDB. We will actively provide strategic leadership in regulating where we can and engage with relevant authorities, industry associations, and community leaders to advocate for effective policies and enforcement mechanism. By fostering transparency and accountability, we can create an industry that is resilient against the corrosive influence of criminal elements. And I encourage uh, each and, and every one of you to continue this conversation beyond today's event. Share your insights, collaborate with your peers, and engage in advocacy efforts. Together we can bring about meaningful change and ensure that our industry operates on principles of fairness, honesty, and safety. And in closing, ladies and gentlemen, let us not forget the responsibility we bear to the communities we serve by tackling the issues uh, that we were dealing with today head on, we not only safeguard our projects, but also contribute to the well-being of the neighborhoods in which we operate and live. Thank you once again for your participation and commitment to a construction industry that values integrity and fosters a culture of excellence. Let us move forward with determination and unity to overcome the challenges before us. Thank you, good night and God bless. Thank you. Sorry, before I release you. So there was, a, there was a suggestion from the floor that we need to have a dialogue like this, and I hope the ministers will help us with the president. Right? Would CIBD please look at hosting that? Because if, if, if you host it, that the president is likely to come. If we call him, he's likely to say no. Can, we, can you help us? Um, we can definitely make that um, 
uh, okay, effort a uh, prof to do yeah. just that because yes. we already have a structure that is called the national stake stakeholder forum yeah. legislated in terms of the cidb yeah. act in fact we just had engagement this morning yeah. i think what we need to do is to extend it to bring in um, um structures that are not participants and then we can set up a summit of sorts where we can then bring Absolutely. in the president to just we'll, engage we'll, we'll hold, at we'll a broader scale we okay. commit to that thank you Please sure. give him a, a round of applause. You had a live here tonight. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's give a round of applause to our, to our, our panelists. Oh, come on. They did a good job. Eh? And some of them were more provocative than others. <laughs> okay, thank you for the ministers. Ministers are a guest of one of both ministers. Thank you so much for making the time tonight. Give, us, give them also the round of applause. Thank you to BBF. Thank you to CBDI. Uh, thank you. Thank you uh, for the team. Can we please just give the team, uh, Talani uh, and uh, all her team, and then Glory. I'm not sure if Glory is with the ENCA team. Can we give them a round of applause as well? Uh, Gloria, please uh, stand up where you are. Is she here? Gloria? Okay, she stepped out. Okay, we, 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 it's her birthday, so I wanted to, you to all sing for her. But let's have dessert. When she comes in, we'll surprise her. Enjoy your networking. Enjoy your evening. And please do drive safely when you do. Goodbye.